Hi there. In this video I'm going to talk about composition of functions. Composition of functions is where we have something like g of f of x or it might be written g after f of x or f after g of x. Now let me demonstrate this with an example. Suppose we were asked to get g of f of 2. Well we first need to get f of 2. So first why this actually means g after f of x. That's how we read it. So first get f of 2 which is 2 squared. Then we get g of the result, which is 3 times 4 plus 2, which is 12 plus 2, which is 14. So we have that g after f of 2 is equal to 14. Now let's uh, let's try f after g. Okay, let's try f after g. So f after g of two means we first do g of two. So that is um, g of two is equal to three times two plus uh, plus two, I think. Yep which is 6 plus 2 which is 8 and then we get f of the result f of 8 is 8 squared which is 64 so we see that uh, f of g of 2 is 64 so when we got g of uh, g after f of 2 we got 14 but f after g of 2 was 64 so they're not equal. So we say composition of functions is not commutative. What does that mean that it's not commutative? Well, it means that the order is important. If we do g after f, it is not necessarily the same as f after g. So to commute means to generally to go to work and come back. In mathematics it means that it's you go and you come back and it's the same. It's the same both ways, in both directions. So for example, multiplication is commutative um, because when we multiply 3 times 5 it's the same as 5 times 3. Um, but it's not the same when we divide. So when we divide, say, 8 by 2, it's not the same as dividing 2 by 8. So division is not commutative and neither is composition of functions. So be careful with that. If it says, um, here's another example, if it says, uh, we'll, do, we'll do another function, we'll do f of x this time is, uh, let's say 2x plus 5 and we'll say that uh, h of x is x squared minus 1. So let's let's try this here. Now uh, let's try h after f of 3. And we get, well what do we do first? We have to do f of 3 first and then we'll do h last. So this means h after f of 3. So f of 3, okay, f of 3 is 2 times 3 plus 5, which is 6 plus 5, it's 11. And then we get h of 11, so it's the output of the first function is the input of the second function. h of 11 is 11 squared minus 1. 
which is 121 minus 1, which is 120. So h after f of 3 is 120. Now let's try f after h of 3. Well, first of all, we need to get h of 3, which is 3 squared minus 1, which is 9 minus 1, which is 8. And then we will get f of 8, which is 2 times 8, plus 5, which is 16 plus 5 is 21. So f after h is of 3 is 21. So again, they're not equal to each other. And in general, they will not be equal. There might be some examples which are, but that would be a coincidence. Now another question that we might be asked is, let's write these functions out again. Now another question that we might be asked is just to find out f after h, or let's call it fh of x. So to get a general formula for this, write it as a function. Okay, so h of x is now x squared minus 1. That becomes the input into my other function. So we basically need to get f of, this is the same as f of h of x. Okay, which means it's 2 times x squared minus 1 plus 5. So the output so the output of the h of x function, we get x squared minus 1 as our output, and that is then input into the second function, which is uh, 2 times something plus 5. So it's 2 times x squared minus 1 plus 5. And we can really simplify that if we want. We can get 2x squared minus 2 plus 5, which is 2x squared plus 3. So we could say that f of h of x, so f after h of x, is is really this function here. We can write it as a single function now. And if we wanted to test this result, we already found that f after h of 3 was 21. So let's try our new function and just see um, f of h of 3. And do we get 21? So twice 3 squared plus 3 is twice 9 plus 3, which is 18 plus 3, which is indeed 21. Okay, let's try and write a general function for h after f. Okay, so um, let's do it in light blue again. h of f of x is, well this time we're going to get h of the result of f of x. So f of x gets substituted into h of x. That is the output of f of x, which is 2x plus 5. So we square 2x plus 5 and take away 1, because that's what h does. Now, let's rewrite that. We have to square 2x plus 5. Um, if you're not familiar with how to square something like that. You could always write it out like this. And 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 5 is 10x. 5 times 2x is also 10x. And 5 times 5 is 25. And then subtract 1. Now I'll add up my like terms and I have a 4x squared plus 20x plus 25 minus 1 is plus 24 and this is what I have for h after f of x written as a general function and as you can see it is not the same as f after h of x and if you want you can test this uh, we've got h after f of 3 uh, you could test this and see do you in fact get 120. 
So uh, why don't you test that yourself and see if you get 120. Okay, thanks very much for watching this video. I hope it helped. That's all for now.